I'm not quite sure where I was, to, but to continue on, uh, we've got a nice sweep there. You can see, oh, you maybe not. Okay, so we've got five microseconds per division, and the switching time, the switch off time, including the noise, is around about the five microsecond mark, which isn't great. I want one microsecond, but I think that, that chip is actually a pile of shit because I'm having to assist it with a 1k resistor on its switch off times. So I think that's designed just for MOSFETs, which don't need such a hefty turn off. Anyway, you can see there that there's a really nice square wave, which is the input wave. That's taken off from across the uh, output of the uh, 5 volts from the Arduino. So that's given, that's, that's cleaned up nicely now, right? Um, we have, this is measuring the temperature. I've got the clamp on the IGBT to measure the temperature. We've got the worst case scenario where it's only just turning. And you can see this is actually a disc magnet, right? So it's being resisted by the clamp that's quite close to it, right? So that's actually under load, right? And you can see the current meter there is flickering a bit because it is actually drawing current. Not much, but it's drawing some, right? 24.4. It's really, really slowly going up. I mean, I've had this running, I think, for about something like 15 or 20 minutes now on its worst case scenario. And the most I've got that up to, well, currently, obviously, is 24.4. It may well go up to about 30 degrees if I left it all day, right? Bearing in mind, that's got no heat sink on it whatsoever. It's just a component on its own. It's driving a 500 watt motor, which is under some load. <coughs> and we can actually measure the current. This is the average current, of course, which is being drawn by the motor. Where can I measure that at? I guess there. So we've, we've got what appears to be about 0.1.2 amps. Let's just reset it. Okay. And DC amps is reset to zero. We'll put it on. Uh, you know, 0.8 of an amp, 0.7. About three quarters of an amp, I would say. Is being drawn through it. <coughs> Yeah, it's 24.5 degrees, this is centigrade. So we've got our worst case scenario. And obviously we've still got some way to go, because I want to get that down to one microsecond, which means that that probably won't register at all. You're probably talking about 15 degrees. And this is good, because as soon as I mount that on a heat sink, under these conditions, you won't be able to measure the temperature driving that motor like this which is how I want it, because it's going to drive a motor which is 16 times the power of that, which means we have 16 times the everything. Okay. At the moment it's driving it, in the worst case scenario it's got about an amp. That means that it's going to be 16 amps, right, when it's running. But it, just before it actually starts running, that's the, that's the worst case current scenario, as in, you know, with current flowing through it. Okay because that's just the point at which it needs the most current is just to break the sort of like get over the friction of the brushes <coughs> in our case or to get it moving or something which means we're going to be loading it up and the temperature is going to go up but at least it means that it can control the current and because it's not noisy we're not going to be blowing it because it's quite obvious to me that the reason why we're blowing these things is because our square wave signal that we're supposed to be supplying it with is actually a bunch of mess. It's just white noise for more, more than anything. So that is actually spending pretty much all of its time in a transition mode, right? And when I add it in the milk float, if it's spending pretty much all of its time in transmission transition mode, and it's trying to dissipate, you know, up to a hundred amps, maybe even more, probably up to three hundred amps. Right? There's no way on this green earth that it's going to be able to withstand it, and so it pops it, which is fair enough, right? But if it's not in transition mode, we've got a nice clean square instead, right? Then that means that it will still obviously be dissipating the power, right? But these components can dissipate, I think, 500 watts, around about the half a kilowatt, 
right? So they can dissipate 500 watts of heat, obviously on a heat sink, right? Um, and they can withstand a short circuit current. It can withstand a short circuit for 10 microseconds, right? That's a full-blown current through from the battery, right? Which will be like a thousand amps, <laughs> you know, something stupid. I think on a car battery, the cranking amps that they usually stand for is, is you know, three, four, five hundred amps. So it could be up to a thousand amps for 10 microseconds. It's supposed to be able to withstand that in a one shot, you know, in other words, a thousand amps for 10 microseconds and then off completely, switched off, right? It's supposed to be able to withstand that. But if it's actually trans transitioning and you've got a hundred amps going through that thing whilst it's in transition, right? So you've got a hundred amps going through it at say, in our case, 12 volts. Right, that's 1.2 kilowatts. It can't dissipate that. It's only designed for 500 watts. Right, you multiply that up to the the, the top temperature that it can, the top current that it can take. Right, under a, a burst, under under a repetitive mode, which is 200 amps. Right, so you're taking 200 amps through. That's 2.4 kilowatts. That component cannot t dissipate 2.4 kilowatts. It just can't do it. It's only designed for half a kilowatt. So it's no wonder this thing's blowing. What are we up to? You can see while I'm talking, I'm just keep measuring it. Yep. That resistor there is very hot. It burn your finger if you touched it. Okay. But obviously the IGBT isn't. So we've got the, the we've got the output from there. It's going through an opto isolator. The opto isolator's crap, it's got a three microsecond time. Uh, tra uh, transition time. You know, as in from low to high, <coughs> we've amplified the output from that to get it onto a more linear part, so that means our transition time is now much better. Um, we can meter the transition time on the output, I suppose, uh, but it is much better now. I think the transition time on the input is actually under a microsecond. It's like hard, it's like 500 nanoseconds or something, and the rest of that is lost because, of course, we're driving a capacitive input. And because there's something wrong with this thing, which is cold, so I suspect we've blown it <coughs> long ago, sort of thing. And that we're probably just driving the output directly from that. <laughs> right. So uh, I think it's it, it basically, I think the low side part of it is probably burnt out. Yeah. Anyway, so um, we've got our output. It is working. And we've got pretty much no temperature rise that we can really speak of. Because if that was, I mean, I've seen that go up to hundreds. Um, I think once when I was testing out the uh, that motor, uh, the IGBTs that I had working at uh, went up to about 120 degrees. I didn't realise it because the clamp melted and it came off. It still melted.